impact on humanity and the lives of the people on the earth. And as such, it is important that we should take a pause and try to understand what these countries stand for, what is their philosophy, what is their background, how they are going to perform in future. Let's start with the United States. I myself got my education in United States. I'm a great admirer of United States. I did a lot of new projects with the technology which comes from the United States. And even today, the youth of the world do look as United States towards their thought leader, their lifestyle, and the way they would like to mold their lives. And it is no wonder that after the Second World War, it was the United States which became the leader of the world. Though there was another nation who challenged the United States, Russia, and there was a cold war between the two, two countries. But very soon, the Russia declared themselves a loser, actually Russia collapsed, got fragmented, and the United States became undoubted the leader of the world. But let's go back to the history of the United States. How did the United States won the war? We all know that when the Allied nations were fighting Germany and uh, uh, Japan, the first atomic explosion, which was done on humanity, which made Japan surrender, was from the United States. The United States have been a very strong military power. And even today, they feel that their biggest strength is their military power. And because of their military power, they can dominate the world and make them do what they feel is right. Only a few days back, the United States passed a bill to spend $765 billion for defense. The $765 billion is equivalent to all the countries in the world defense budget. All including India, China, Europe. If you take all the countries of the world on one side, and United States as a single country, their budget is that big. What is the reason a country who is so powerful is spending such a large amount of money still? Who do they pay? Is it because of defense? Is it to secure their country? Or is it to dominate others. We all know that China has now emerged as a global power. They are already number two economy. They are also a military power. And United States, while claiming their, you know, when they pass the bill, they specifically raise point. If one of their point is that they want to stop China in their endeavors towards Taiwan and South and East China Sea. So is that the country which can lead the humanity? Is that the people we want? We had this sort of tyranny before. We are sitting in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom itself became global leader at one time. But global leader as what? With the power of gun. By dominating the society. And the whole world suffer. Including India. Including China. Even in, including United States. Which has to fight a freedom war against the UK. The UK became one of the most dominating force ever in the history of the humanity. And they use this domination to control the world, to control the world thinking. And they try to project 
that they are the savior of humanity. They taught the world how to be civilized. They gave English to the world. They gave certain things to the world. But now we know that after the British colonized countries were in made independent, they do, and now the British itself is in a very low number among the top 10 projected countries in future. I feel that the change of the world should start from here, from London. Because this is the country, this is the city from which the biggest domination of the world started. And if anything has to change in terms of attitude, in terms of thinking, in terms of future projections of the world, is the city of London. City of London, I remember that my father, who built Odi Group in 1930, he used to talk of the Britishers, collectors, commissioners who were in India dominating as people who tried to treat themselves like gods. With a very small <coughs> number of people, they ruled these countries. And the largest country they ruled was India. And today, it is important that we do not get into again this Cold War which happened before, which made all of us suffer between Russia and US, where every country was to decide which side they go, which are either with Russia or with US. There was a lot of non-aligned movement was starting, including from India, but very soon India was thrown in the camp of Russia. And so was many, many countries. So this bipolar world, which we have all seen, has made the humanity suffer. The world is again getting into the same game of another Cold War between US and China. Every day in newspaper we see that. I was in the morning taking a morning walk with my friend, Mr. Kandida. And I was telling him about today's seminar. And I asked him that please do come, because you are in London, and you are also from India. And his name is Hinduja, he's a Hindu. Not only, <laughs> no, nobody can doubt that. <laughs> so I told him he was coming. So he said, be aware what you say. Be aware, America is watching. Whatever you may say here, think of the consequences. You are a businessman, you must think of consequences. I said, what consequences? He said, no, America is watching. <laughs> <laughs> they are watching. They are watching all of us. Either from this room or from satellites. <laughs> Everybody is being watched. Why they are watching? I have some friends from Iran. Iran, one of the most influential countries. A country whose culture was spread all over Asia. Even as India, we got advantage of that. Persia was known for that. But today, the people of Iran are afraid. Afraid of this. Afraid of United States. I come from Singapore. I'm a citizen of Singapore. People of Singapore are afraid of China. Singapore has 74% population, which is Chinese. So I was called by the Singapore president a few years back. And he said, Dr. Modi, you must become a citizen of Singapore. He offered me the citizenship on the platform. I said, why? He said, the only savior for us in Singapore. Because so Singapore, China has, you know, the one China policy. That means Chinese, wherever in the world are there, 
It's a declared policy, China. They are protected by China. So even if there's a Chinese city seventy fours in Singapore, they are all protected by China. That means if they have any problem, they go to the Chinese embassy, not the Singapore government. So this one China policy made Singapore afraid, and they said the only people who can save us, who can balance, is India. So last year, in the same time, 15th August, we did a seminar in Singapore with the Chinese government, uh, with the Singapore government, called New India Emerging Global Leader. We wanted to put New India New Global Leader. They said, no, no, if you put New Global Leader, the Chinese will get angry. So it's okay, you put emerging group. So we said, okay, doesn't matter. As long as you put globally. So I think people are afraid of China, especially where the Chinese population is there. People are afraid of China dominating. They took over Tibet. They are taking over many countries of Asia. The Belt and Road Initiative, people think, is a way for them to dominate the world. Even their good deeds are taken negatively. Because it is well, what's wrong with Belt and Road? It's the development of the world. It will bring the trade more cheaper. But there is a fear. The fear is through their Belt and Road program, they will take over the countries because they are throwing money like anything. They have given Russia three trillion dollar credit for the battle. They have given money to Germany. They have given money to many countries, including Middle East and Africa, because they have enough reserve. To they have one of the largest dollar reserves in the world. While America economy is in deficit every year for more than a trillion dollar with a deficit running higher than $15 trillion. The Chinese are sitting with surplus cash. They have enough cash to give to the whole world without affecting their own economy. So, would you like China to be a global leader? No. A country which is run their own country in a dominant manner, a communist country we know. So what is the alternative? Does we have alternative or don't we have alternative? As you have seen, the only country which can challenge these two powerful countries is India. The only country which has the confidence without any ill will, without any negativity, for any country in the world is India. The first speech of Indian Prime Minister in the United Nations when we became Prime Minister, Nair Modi, was he talked of India as a rich group. He said, let's have not this P5 and G20 and all that, let's talk of G all. Let's talk of the whole humanity as one. Let's not make a powerful group of people to dominate others, which has been the strategy of US all their life. If you become powerful, they make you part of a team. So when US had problems, they started G20. And a lot of countries were quite happy, they are a team member of some global team. But will India will go the same way, like China and US? Will India leadership will also bring negativity to the world? I think that's the question which people with the Indian background have to think of. As Ram said, that India is a land which is the land of Buddha, who spread the message of non-violence. It is